In the office of Machiavelli, the UCI Congress took farce to a new level by voting on whether to have a new vote about having a vote in secret or in view of humans. A five-hour legal fest resulted in Pat McQuaid being replaced by a very nice man in a dressing gown. Everyone went home happy now that cycling has been fixed. There will certainly be no doping scandals involving GB riders. In a brazen effort to annoy Brian Cookson's sugar daddy, Igor Makarov, Pat McQuaid single-handedly stole all the Russian team bikes while Hein Verbergen kept watch and drove the getaway van. This is certainly not true. It was a criminal gang, most likely. PMQ was busy riding back to Eagle and was unavailable for comment. While one of Cookson's first actions was to bring Tracy Gowdry into the role of vice president, GB Pro Katie Kolklo highlighted the challenge ahead for the yet-to-be-formed Women's Commission. Kolklo announced her retirement at only 23, having felt her career would be as a domestique. She declared that in the women's peloton, such a role doesn't ensure a reasonable salary or security. Having won a world title in the team time trial, Kolklo aims to win a living wage away from cycling. That sucks. Good luck, Katie. In a potential doping scandal involving a GB rider, Team Sky recruit John Tiernan Locke has been sent a strongly worded letter giving him three weeks to explain suspicious biopassport values. The data shows that when he was winning stage races in 2012, his values were different from how they are in 2013, when he isn't quite up there at the first speed zone. Team Sky have said that they aren't saying anything and their cutting edge recruitment process is way badass. Blinders! One of our very own people, Saddle Blaze, a.k.a. I forget his real name, actually. He's riding from Barcelona to Rome. He didn't make the cut for the Vuelta this year. I don't think he's going to scrape the team for the world, so he's decided to do his very own little stage race. And that has been enabled by this chap here, uh, Dinal, Dylan Reynolds, from Ride and Seek. Um, Dylan, a normal stage race sounds like a bit of a logistical nightmare and that's with professional riders who are used to getting from point A to point B. How does it work with regular people from all sorts of walks of life with the common goal of getting from Barcelona to Rome? There's no one dynamic. It's, uh, it's the case that from one tour to the next uh, you might have a group that ride together and that's easy to manage. Um, as we're talking here, we've as you know, we have someone who's we know where she is, mm -hmm. but she's there's a there's a bit of a there's a difference between where the the front runners and the back runners. But we're just generally fine with the the van support. We've got mm -hmm. two guides, sometimes three guides, with the one guide in the van, one guide in the bike. You just manage it and uh, ultimately get everyone to the uh, the end point at the end of the day. So it is possible to stop and smell the flowers. To our mind, that's what it's all about. Uh, we look to take people to the the best areas for riding those best area, those areas uh, usually offer so much in terms of the culture the gastronomy and, uh, and so much besides uh, mm -hmm. to not smell the flowers to my mind is, uh, okay. is a bit of a waste it's termed the Hannibal ride were any of the elephants on Strava? <laughs> uh, to the best of my knowledge no but uh, judging by the speed that uh, some of our guests go up the hills and maybe maybe that could have been the case I suppose we'll have to ask Strava if they can introduce a kind of pachyderm button that you click what would you say is, is the main challenge in terms of the logistics because it's an A to B uh, a regular tour most tours will stay in a certain area and they'll just use maybe two or three hotels and loop back to that hotel we're on the move um, from day one through to day 28 uh, so the logistical elements of changing hotels and changing restaurants and setting all of that up is it's a challenge. And no challenges from Spanish customs either. <laughs> yeah, they're the, uh, the left field ones really. The Spanish customs have certainly thrown us a curveball this time, having uh, confiscated the free, uh, free Linsky bikes. And there's one disturbing aspect that I've discovered in that most people have a concept of a rest day. I certainly have a concept of a rest day. Your rest day involves Mont Ventoux. On this particular tour, this time, uh, we had a few guys that said they wanted to ride Ventoux. It's there. Um, we stayed just south of the uh, of Ventoux, just north of Avignon. And four or five of them said, well, it's there. I, yeah. I, we had the same thing last year, bear in mind. And everyone said they wanted to do it at the start of the tour. We got to uh, Ventoux and only a couple did. So. Okay, so it's like a rest day, only different. 
It's a pretty phenomenal rest day, yeah. Uh -huh. And I also have a group coming in who's just doing stage two, which is a stage just over the Alps. And typically, the warm-up ride would be on a, a flat. You do a 20K ride just to get used to your bike. This group have expressly asked to do Von 2 as their warm-up ride, okay. which is pretty, pretty full on. <laughs> uh, in terms of landscapes, what's your favorite section of the, of the entire route? Probably the Languedoc area, yeah. going through the Cafar Castle area. I mean, having guided for so many years, and very, I've done so many tours in Provence and all through Italy, that when we scouted this tour, I was really taken aback just how beautiful it is. And I suppose with, with traveling through Spain, then France, then Italy, the food must be really disappointing. Yeah, shocking. <laughs> and no wine either. No, 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 we, we banned them from drinking wine. It's such a long trip, obviously, yeah. Yeah, they've got a, it's only water. No. And I'll just add the extra audio that I'm here with Dylan Reynolds, rather than Dinlan, or whatever I said initially. <laughs> Café du Cycliste is a cycling café nestled in the French Riviera. Not only can you go there for, I'm sure, some amazing pain au chocolat and uh, café au lait, but you can buy some pretty exceptional cycling clothing. We've had some of their products on review for the last six months. It's been worn at least twice a week. Uh, so what do we think? First off, we have the Josette, which is a, a pretty special cycling jersey. It's a short sleeve jersey, three pockets at the back, full length zip, but it is water and windproof. Um, it's kind of like the holy grail for any cyclist living in the Northern Hemisphere or perhaps New Zealand, maybe even Patagonia. It's pretty tight fitting. It doesn't flap around in the wind. We've basically used it in all sorts of conditions from minus three C in February in the UK to 17C in Spain when we expected some rain. To be honest, it's one of those jerseys that you'll get use of probably nine months of the year. It is definitely waterproof. As for breathable, it's like anything that's claimed to be waterproof and breathable. These things are uh, dependent on how hard you're working, but it's certainly breathable enough for pretty much all riding conditions. Do we have any issues with it? We only have one issue with it. Um, the little flaps that cover the rear pockets and the tight fit just mean that it can be pretty difficult um, getting your hands in the pocket if you're wearing gloves. You tend to fumble around trying to find where the pocket is and get the flap up in the right place. That is the only issue we have with this jersey. Uh, it's pretty exceptional. Like I say, you could get use out of it probably nine months of the year, certainly in the UK. You know, you can go out in winter and not need to take a waterproof jacket because the Josette is going to prove that, that function pretty well. Priced at 155 euros, I would say given the use you'll get out of it, it's exceptional value for money. The perfect companion to the Josette is the Lulu Arm Warmers uh, Super Roubaix. Basically exceptional performance in winter. It would be nice if it was a similar kind of waterproof material of the Josette. Um, but to be honest, most of the time that you're wearing arm warmers, you're not expecting to get um, rained on. And the, the times that we've used it in the rain, it copes pretty well. Uh, the Josette sleeves come down quite far, so you get pretty good overlap, good warmth, good fit and uh, highly recommended selling for 37 euros. Finally, we also used uh, the Josephine bib short. Um, I have to say after 25 or so years of riding bikes, it's one of the best bib shorts I've ever used. The comfort is exceptional. They use a really good arse pad, for want of a better word. It's been used in all sorts of rides up to you know, 140 kilometer rides in the mountains where you're you're climbing in the saddle for long periods. The grip at the, the thigh, it's a laser cut silicon grip. Pretty razor sharp tan lines, but also a really comfortable fit. Uh, it's a six panel construction, so you get a really nice um, fit to the, the rest of the short. It's not kind of leaving big baggy areas where you might think your cuckoo's gonna find its way. So exceptional fit. I did get a couple of negative comments about why did I have a large breasted woman logo on my shorts, but I guess that's because that's the logo of Café du Cycliste. The shorts sell for 129 euros on the Café du Cycliste website. Highly recommended, one of the best shorts I've ever used. I would be very upset if they get eaten by a short monster or the washing machine. Check out the products from Café du Cycliste. Uh, we've been really impressed.
I think it's time that roadreel.com got a team bus, so I need to find a lawyer in Girona who can register a team bus, get the insurance. Um, I'm not planning on failing a dope test, but if I do, who am I going to call? I'm going to call Andrea Garriga. Okay, well I am in the offices of a lawyer in Girona and just so my mother doesn't worry, I haven't been arrested again. <laughs> um, but basically every professional cyclist we speak to in Girona eventually mentions the name Andrea Garriga, who it seems is, is an integral part of, of a rider's life when they move here. Mm -hmm. um, Andrea has, has close links to Garmin Sharp but works with many other cyclists. So really we, we just want to get a little bit of a a background to his work in uh, professional cycling. Andrea, thanks for your time today. Thanks to you. When did you start working within uh, professional cycling? At least 14 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. the, at the beginning was more accountancy mm -hmm. for the cyclists and then became other things and then teams involved yeah. so far. Mm -hmm. Also, I cannot, I do not want to disguise or to hide it, also working with some doping cases. Mm -hmm. But this was al at a later stage. Yeah. My assumption was, uh, if it's cyclists and lawyers, it must be contracts. But there are so many other aspects of, of a rider's professional and private life that you yep. work in. Can you give us some examples of, of the kind of work you might have to do, both for a team and for riders? Uh, residency, to get a, foreign, a Spanish foreign identification number, yeah to assist and help them with rentals, with uh, mobile phones, okay. if they need a, a, a second-hand vehicle, motorbike, insurances, uh, taxes, even taxes, yeah. sometimes to provide them health, health coverage, just to, be, just to make everything easier for them to have a life in this new location, which it is Girona or my area. Are you from the, the area? From the yeah, area? I'm from the area. That's why I know it and yeah. I love it. And I'm, well, we are all very proud that we have so many cyclists living in Girona. More or less, cyclists, professional, top elite, professionals living permanently in Girona, or which they have lived in Girona, I know more or less 100. Mm -hmm. So it's easy, that it's, it's easy to say, but technically we can say that Girona has become, in the last 10 years, uh, a world center for professional cyclists, yeah. not only for men, also for women. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But there is one, there is one advantage that professional cyclists they like a lot is to stay here because although they are famous, they are stars, yeah. they are not disturbed by the local people. This is one of the things I like it to listen from Lance Armstrong, his, yeah. who said, "I like this area. I like these people because they do not disturb me. I can go." out I can have a coffee and although local people they know me yeah. they, do, they do not disturb me okay. but then then for example then uh, <laughs> but this can also be misunderstood because I remember that Lance Armstrong said another thing once he was going out with Cheryl Crow mm -hmm. he invited her to stay in Girona 
and after uh, being two or three weeks, uh, she said to him, I'm sorry, I don't like this. I, I can walk free in the street and nobody stops me. No one takes pictures, no one stops me. That's why I don't like it. Okay. Then, then it was the time that Lance uh, went back to Nice again. Yeah. That was the second time, no? That's interesting then, because it, it would explain why no one has stopped me in the street. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's yeah, true. So, so it's not because exactly. No, am, it's yeah. not because you're not famous. It's because we respect and we don't oh, want okay. to. That's true. That's true. Could you give us a, a little bit of insight to the work that you do with Garmin Sharp? Because you know they have a service course here, and a lot yeah. of the riders are based here. Well, yeah, I have a yeah, I have a contract with Garmin in the sense that I assist them locally with mm, the daily work with the daily life of the team mm -hmm. uh, outside the united states garmin slip the stream this is the name of the of the company but garmin sharp are located only in girona mm -hmm. they have a big war uh, warehouse in in girona which they use as the well, as the central offices for for everything and i assist them with the daily life which means when they buy a bus, when they buy a lorry, uh, vehicles, yeah. whatever, we register them, we insure them. Also, from the legal side, when they rent the, the, yeah. the warehouse, when they rent vehicles with leasing, etc. It's also some minor things, good things, that from time to time it happens. For example, traffic fines. Okay. It's unbelievable that the cycling team can get traffic fines, but it happens. Yeah. And sometimes I get a phone call, Drew, we are stopped by the Catalan traffic police in the middle of the road. Yeah. And what are you doing? No, no, we are just training how many of you <laughs> six. And if you are six with a, with a car, with a team car to protect us, uh, what's the team car doing? No, with the four, with the four lights flashing, okay. it's stopping the traffic at the back. Yeah. So, okay. And the, the bus, the bus that goes from Jura to another place is just pushing because oh. they're so I say, oh, okay, don't worry, and the police is here talking about. Obviously, then I need to talk with the police, this can be sorted out. A small traffic fine is arranged yeah. and paid, no, yeah. obviously. But if, well, at least, well, I think they are very happy yeah. because they know someone locally who can represent, sure. collaborate, and be with them with these small annoying things and with other ones. Sometimes they have a problem or well, a car crash, a car accident. So at least they know that someone is taking care. Mm -hmm. If we could just talk briefly about doping. I, I know you've got client confidentiality. But yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because I cannot make publicity sure. of this. So I cannot say names. Yeah, but many, many cycling fans, and I think you know, Lance Armstrong is a big reason, but they're very cynical, they think if someone fails a test, they must be positive. Mm -hmm. Your experience as a lawyer, I, I believe that you, you know that it's not always at, so simple. At, at, that's true. At the beginning, when I was starting with the doping cases, I had more or less this feeling or this approach, you know, if, if they are caught, it's because of this. But my experience with doping cases has proved at the end that not in most of the cases, but in most of the cases, the cyclist is not the guilty person in this process. Yeah. And sometimes I have realized that the, the client, the cyclist, was absolutely, was absolutely unguilty. And I said, I remember one particular case when I asked the client, well, tell me the truth because we will go one way or the other. I said, no, 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 I haven't done it, I haven't taken until the end. And I said to him, okay, we will go, I will follow this, but maybe then we will knock on the wall. This happened. I talked with the laboratorium, which I knew because it was a Spanish one, and they said, Andreu, sorry, the test is 100% clear, the procedure is with no fail. I said, yes, I know, because it's true, you have done it right, so there's no fail. This, it's absolutely clear he has taken this. Well, he was punished, but six months later, I got a phone call from the mother who said, Andreu, we have just realized, because a friend of us has said that a colleague from another team gave a Coke with a drug inside to my son. But this proof or this helped me to understand that in some cases, 
some cases they cannot control what what they have been given or they it's 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 absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous if you need to this you need to not trust your your nearest friend sure. the one you have been yeah. 10 years from from kids yeah. and say no take this coca cola thank you it's it's so awful that well, but this is absolutely true then i realized that cyclists are not the guiltiest in this process thank you very much for your time Andrew. it's been a Could pleasure I, I just put in one final request the next time I get arrested in Girona, could you try not to be on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. I'm sorry. It was no I'm sorry. We have like it to yeah. help you. It was a it, it was will a be another experience. time. Another time. Another I'm, time. I'll try not to. <laughs> it was an interesting experience. So thank you very much. A pleasure. Okay. A pleasure.